morning everybody RV living with the geezer and uh, Blanca and I are down here in the Coconut Park that's the city park of Alpine I guess y'all can hear the uh, see if he'll do it again that's a train going through town it's a pretty active track here it's a uh, Union Pacific track Runs along from Del Rio out to El Paso, all the way to California. But uh, yeah, we're back in our old park. We've put on many, many miles out in this park, and it's a nice park. It's uh, it's nothing fancy. It's, it's I really like it. It's just nothing fancy. The this asphalt, and a lot of it needs repair. Walking paths and just uh, there's a softball field, a couple softball fields. They're not fancy. The bathrooms are that block building right there. It's a big park. I, it's I, if you walk all the way around, I think it's a couple of miles. But uh, picnic tables, and you can see it's nice and shady. Really pretty. So yeah, I've got her on her leash. There's not a lot of people out here this morning. I could probably let her, let her off her leash. I might do that in a little bit. But uh, anyway, guys. Uh, as most of y'all know, uh, I'm retired from the fire service. I, I was a 29-year career firefighter in the San Antonio. Uh, it was a suburb of San Antonio, Castle Hills. And I just want to, uh, today's sort of a, sort of a day that uh, I don't do real well on. Uh, it's 9-11, uh, it's as y'all know, and uh, just uh, it's the 20th anniversary and I'll just tell you all a little story of what happened to me on 9-11 uh, I wasn't on duty and I always worked side jobs and it, as every fireman does because you're on you're on 24 hours and you're off for 48 our, our shift was that's the way we worked but uh so I wasn't, I was painting, I had a painting job. I used to paint houses. And I was painting my cousin's house, her trim on her mobile home. And I was up on a ladder. It was, uh, you know, central time. So it was about 8.45 in the morning. And uh, I'd always listen to music when I was painting, you know. And they broke into the country western show I had on and, uh, you know, said that, a plane had just hit the World Trade Center. So, anyway, uh, I thought, hmm, you know, everybody thought it was an accident at first. And then, so, a little while later, they came on and said a second plane had hit. So, I, you know, I stopped and went and got where I could watch a TV. And uh, so, you know, followed the events like everybody else did. Well, the thing that day with us was I have a stepdaughter that lives in Norway and she was in in the air that day she took off that morning from Norway with her newborn baby uh, I think the baby might have been a year old uh, and they were coming over to visit us so uh, of course I'm still married at this time my wife had a job and uh, close to where I was I was working, so I went down there and got with her, and of course she was a mess, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I'm not, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap this up pretty fast, uh, uh, so, anyway, the, the flight that Kim was on wasn't halfway over the Atlantic yet, so what they did with all those flights, they turned them around and sent them back to their original where they took off from. So fortunately that was, we were blessed on that. She returned to Norway. The flights that were over halfway, as y'all know, all had to land in uh, uh, up in Greenland. So, uh, you know, once, once we found out, but it was a long time before we found out what status her flight was. So, uh, you know, it was like tension city, you know, Stressville, all, all day long. 
And then, so, we finally found out, and, I, and we got home, and I, I had a, we had a home in Sisterdale then, which is out, out 17 miles from Comfort, where my son, my youngest son, went to school. And uh, so, we finally got home, and then, of course, I turned TV on, I'm sitting there watching that stuff, and, uh, I mean, all of a sudden, they did, they gave, like, a, I don't know if they had that exact number, but I remember 343 on the fireman that, that perished that day. And uh, it just, I, I mean, I fell apart. And I mean, every year, it, it, the fire department is a brotherhood. You live with those guys 24 hours a day and you, you consider the firemen in New York brothers. I mean, it's a worldwide brotherhood. It really is. It's just, it's just a different, it's a whole different job than anybody. I, I can't even hardly describe the camaraderie that goes with that job. But anyway, so guys, it's 9-11, and just remember what they sacrificed their lives for, if you would. And I'm sure all of you all do. And just, I just try to, I just somehow try to get through today, and uh, it'll be, I'll be better tomorrow. So, anyway guys, I'm out here at a pretty park to start the day off, and who knows, I might just go tip a few with my buddies this afternoon. There's a bunch of retired military guys down there, and we might be able to just cheer each other up a little bit. But uh, anyway, Blanca, when she gets within three blocks of this park, she remembers it, and she starts whining. And I, I tell you what, like yesterday, I wasn't even going to come over here because I was tired, just got through moving. And she started, uh, we passed by here, and she started whining, and I, I had to turn around and come back. So she loves she loves this place. I'm fixing to turn her loose here. Let her run around a little bit. All right, guys. I just wanted to tell you my my story on 9/11, uh, and uh, just uh, remember what that flag stands for. We'll be talking at you later. Adios, my friends. Bye bye.